posgrado en la Universidad de Viena, Italia, en el año 2007 obtuvo el grado de maestro en Economía Política, en el año 2011 obtuvo el grado de doctor en Ciencias Económicas, doctor del Departamento de Economía Política y Estadística de la Universidad de Siena, Italia. De octubre del 2006 a septiembre de 2010, fue estudiante de Cali del Ministerio de la Educación Pública Italiana y de la Universidad de Siena. Becas otorgadas son los estudiantes con el máximo aprovechamiento académico. De septiembre de 2008 a septiembre de 2010, realizó un periodo como investigador en la Universidad de York, en Inglaterra. Los principales campos de investigación son de econometría de series de tiempo, de econometría para la evaluación de políticas públicas, de econometría de panel de datos, de cual de la La dinámica económica, la teoría de juegos evolutivos. Ha publicado artículos de investigación en revistas internacionales de alto impacto, como lo son el Biomedical Development Economics, Environmental and Resource Economics, Review of Development Economics, Metroeconómica, International Unit Journal of Public Health, Economic Analysis and Policy. De igual manera, cuenta con publicaciones internacionales en el área de Economía de la Salud, de la salud y Epidemiología, por citar algunas, American Journal of Internal Medicine, Neuroepidemiology, Pharmacoepidemiology and Drug Safety, Neurological Sciences, PMC Health Services Research. Laura Policardo fue funcionaria pública en el rango de investigadora para la Agencia de Salud de la Región Toscana, Italia. Actualmente trabaja como funcionaria pública en la Agencia de Impuestos, Aduana y Monopolio. Pues damos la bienvenida a la doctora. Me eh, eh, gusta usar el micrófono. And uh, what I'm about to present today is a uh, joint work uh, with Becca, Hill, and uh, Grandma Day, a professor at the day when I was calling at the Colorado School of Science. So basically, in this paper, we want to study the well uh, inequality per se on economic growth via interpretation to reduce consumption. Uh, the presentation is divided into four broad sections. The first, which is saying the motivation, uh, the second, which is introduces a simple theoretical model, the third, uh, which presents the data in the empirical and the mystical self conclusion. So, basically, uh, among the motivations that uh, of a global trend in the increase of consumption of luxury value. Uh, then we also have a new release of uh, in a, in a wealth inequality data, previous literature about the effect of inequality, focus on the effect of income inequality, a flow variable for the use of wealth inequality, which is a soft variable, and uh, to the left of So as Timothy points out, when the world income inequality ratio rises dramatically, the rich may stop paying and invest as additional wealth income only to form a lot of money. So, some scholars, after the release of this, this new data, uh, started to include in the model the status income inequality effect on growth, the work in inequality variable. And what did they found? They found that basically the income inequality variable becomes statistically unsignificant. And this induced this scholar to think of maybe work in inequality that accounts more for my follow income inequality. So, basically, uh, say that. Capital may be not productive in the new country context. So many people may keep investing in luxury uh, because luxury goods are a good store of value and may, it may, they may give up to them. So they are they are becoming like strangers, not investing in production, not creating um, employment, not creating new firms. So they just buy. Uh, yacht, uh, 
actually out with the back of the back and so but not uh they are not invested in this document. So um uh, we 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 <coughs> we try to um to, to develop a model to justify the fact that this kind of investment into unproductive uh, capital is detrimental for growth. So one critic that also is really critic when we try to um, submit this, this, this paper is the journal was the fact that we take for granted that unproductive capital was made to spend for the rich. And uh, some reviewers say that uh, basically uh, in Norway, for example, also also the poor or a uh, substantial fraction of their assets is the luxury type. So we gathered evidence for the US and France that the two countries that we analyze and we found something very interesting. For example, the US Federal Reserve Board interviewed every uh, two years about 6,000 families and asked to take information about their wealth and their luxury wealth. So what we have here, we have that uh, first and foremost, uh, luxury assets are about uh, uh, three for the poorest uh, fraction of the population. Let's say we ordered all these 6,000 respondent families according to their wealth, so something like that. and then we plotted uh, this measure the best of wealth had as luxury assets and total wealth had as luxury assets over several years. What we found there is that the rich and the poor offer much the same at certain points into luxury assets because the poor owns about four percent of their total wealth, luxury assets, while the rich more or less six eight percent of the over over Of course. These the richer are on more uh, are richer <laughs> in person in levels they own much more uh, luxury goods than the poor. But in France, the picture is quite different. Here we got the data from the European Central Bank, and we have three thousand available the first for 2010, and then uh, 2013, and 2017. And here we have that. The poor or the substantial fraction of their total wage production and also the rich. So, one in the US, uh, the mean of uh, luxury assets for the both of the poorest 25% population was about 800 euros per family, while for the rich was about four, uh, $450,000. In France, we have that this mean is quite different. The bottom 10 percent of nation owns a mean of four thousand five hundred dollars uh, euro sorry in luxury goods, while the rich owns about, about uh, one million and six hundred thousand uh, euro. So basically, uh, but it seems that after uh, after some point. The rich doesn't spend proportionally more of their wealth in production because this this line becomes a more and more plain. Why is different? We have to do this different for the different level of segregation, rich and poor in the uh, this is this could be a reason. So now we introduce a simple theoretical model which has the following property. So there is a type of luxury asset that, um, that is counted that accounts for wealth and wealth inequality, but has no direct significance. Think for the general, picture, 
uh, gold, diamond, which are not direct Okay. So this luxury non productive asset has the potential to have to be held disproportionately across sanity and from outdoor. So wealth can become more uniquely distributed across time. So the presence of luxury non-productive assets in an economy can contribute to increase wealth in the The more uniquely wealth is distributed across outdoor, the, the slower the economic growth, which but different percentage no doubt of outdoor to hold luxury non-productive assets to stay for so this model is based on Bertolas book as the B thousand sixteen. He has major computation, so he has uh, uh, the possibility that you the present of the asset that the actually factor can accuracy on the report. So total wealth is the sum of K plus U, where K represents productive factor and U luxury asset. The capital, the capital income is instead given by the equation Y, equation 2, which is basically uh, the sum of wage value times labor plus a uh, big R, which is the rate of uh, rate of return of the capital factor times. So, as I said before, I represent all accumulated factors for this labor W. Wage is a function of capital and labor. The rate of return of productive capital is also a function of capital and labor, plus delta K, which represents the sweet rate of application of the equation. Um, consumption is assumed to be a linear function, which is the sum of a consistent level of consumption, A P A Y, which uh, A represents the marginal propensity to consume from current income and it is included between zero and one. And DK are the marginal propensity to consume from car uh, from capital, accumulated capital. In, uh, in other words, B represents the conversion rate in a productive factor into luxury assets, which is unproductive. So the dynamics of household accumulation of productive capital follow this equation, basically given by income minus consumption, and uh, it, which is also given by this equation. Uh, if we substitute the equation for consumption, we get the K dot, the sense dynamic for productive capital, is equal to income uh, minus what is left from, from consumption, minus the subsistence level of consumption. Minus the conversion rate of productive capital into a productive capital. So the statistical conditions that produce a, state, a positive steady state level of aggregate capital K are uh, that labor income minus what is left of consumption must be greater than the subsistence level of consumption, and the rate of return of capital or productive capital rate of consumption must be lower than the conversion rate of productive capital into luxury. So the dynamics of a household wealth is given by equation X1, where the dynamics of unproductive capital is given by its depreciation rate and its value, data usually the appreciation or depreciation rate. Plus, what is converted from the productive capital? So, uh, with a constant marginal propensity, where the adults will convert more productive capital into unproductive capital on a level. And therefore, they will have more unproductive and luxury capital in their place. So, if we arrange and sub make some substitution, of the previous equation into the equation for, for total wealth, we have that the rate of growth of total wealth for a household is given by this equation. And it's possible to see when B is constant, wealth inequality doesn't matter. So 
the market for. Uh, so with a linear B, the conversion of productive capital into a productive asset has no effect on the output square because what is going to square? I have I have 10 hundred in the productive capital and 10 hundred euros productive capital and also 10 hundred euros income. It's the same because I have reached 20. So now we defeat two scenarios according to the evidence that gathered before the evidence of the US and the evidence of the US. So in this case, we assume that there are two uh, types of households, rich and poor, and the poor households have B equal to so, which implies that they have no luxury assets. And they have no desire to acquire production assets. While the rich households have B positive, and therefore they acquire luxury assets and also have a positive endowed consumption. So, from equation 9, wealth inequality grows if the rate of growth of wealth for the poor is less than the rate of growth of wealth for the rich. This implies, after some arrangement, that. Delta U, which is the rate of appreciation of unproductive capital, must be given the An important insight of this, of this inequality is that wealth inequality means even though the rate of um, appreciation of unproductive capital is lower than the, rate, than the rate of the market F bigger. So, what is the effect of wealth inequality uh, on growth? So, it's possible to prove that uh, the, the rate of growth of GDP is, is equal to the equation. And it's possible, and it's pretty clear that this equation here, that is the rate of growth of GDP, is increasing. Uh, growth is reduced and if it increases the existing level of consumption. So but if B is constant uh, across the outlook, wealth inequality has a, a no effect. As we have said, so this is the case of France. number two. Uh, we try to uh, find a function in this case that fits the data that we found before. It's possible to see that B is not similar. So we try to, to, to find a possible fit for this data by assuming a function for K, which is not linear and can be somehow um, an approximation of that thing. We, we found that. We found that uh, we introduced a, introduce a non-linearity in, in with the first derivative of the difference between the two, and also we found that a possible approximation of the data that we, that we saw before could be this function. In this case, what happened to GDP growth? The same equation, but in this case, We have that both rich and poor possess proportionally more than more of their income of capital in the non-productive assets, provided that B is covered in B. Because the mean for K tending to zero for K tending to zero. So if inequality, wealth inequality grows, both rich and poor will, will spend more into luxury items, and therefore growth is new. So, we couldn't find uh, a real test in the whole hypothesis because of lack of data. We don't have uh, data, macroeconomic data on luxury consumption because we don't have a real definition and a commonly accepted definition of luxury. So, we just tested whether wealth 
whether income of the wealth they want to put in a detrimental position. Our core model is a bar, and we use six, um, six models. Not for, for, for the two models, but, but, um, so we use annual GDP per capita growth and personal wealth share of the richest 10 percent of the uh, the share of wealth of the middle point and uh, central government debt, per capita capital stock and stock. These are our main variables. Here we have a plot of the wealth share of the top 10 middle point and bottom 50 percent population. So basically in the US we have that the richest 10 percent population or almost 70 percent of total wealth. Uh, we have a steady trend of an increasing trend after the year 1995, which is basically at the expense of the middle class. As you can see, the poor also cost down. And what we observe in the data is almost no variation. So 
So we have in the fifth period a decrease of about 1.5% in GDP growth as a variation of 1.7 shares for red and percent population. And this uh, system comes back to the steady state level, but with time. And cumulatively, basically, this effect uh, generates a drop on the income of the Rent citizen of about two thousand dollars per year. So consider that uh, the mean income of a French individual is about thirty thousand dollars, a drop of two thousand dollars is a lot. So this instead is the picture for for US. What we have here that. The system is not really significant, very significant, but after three, four years, and we get back this really, really small. So, uh, we also, uh, the, the, our reviewers, of course, suggested that maybe. Our results do not grow with respect to different measures of wellness policy in different public dimension. So, uh, we first check our erosion of our results, so re estimating the model uh, instead of using the wealth share of the top 10 and middle 40% population, we included in the model the ratio between wealth of the top. Controlling for the uh, middle, the share of wealth by the middle. In this case, as, as you can see, qualitatively, the result for France does so much, and neither for the US, because for France, the, 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 the impact is still negative, close to one, a little bit more than one. For the United States, uh, it can be kind of that an open referee says that maybe uh, uh, our data were depend our results were dependent on the 2008 2009 graph. So it's suggested to uh, include in the bar model. Are done with representative, representative spirit. We did that and we didn't find uh, qualitative difference. Then we said we tried to estimate a different model again. Uh, in this case, we use a simple OLS model. But since uh, the OLS LS model is really uh, not estimate consistency. Coefficient of PCR improvement of the And since we suspected to believe well shared and we estimated a, a two step uh, regression. And the model for France and uh, uh, yeah, the model for France is this one. At the third step, we estimated uh, well uh, using as a dependent value of well of the top 10% and the, and the middle of Population over one last of the variable GDP growth, uh, employment, capital, government debt. Yeah. Then we did the same thing for wealth for the middle of percent. We estimated the biggest value of these two variables and we included then the biggest value in this regression for GDP. For US, the same. same. We uh, simply drop in the middle for the percent that the wealth of the model is just a significant education for wealth. And we use a significant education for So, this is 
our zone. As we can see, the effect of when uh, of when all malice sends the same population is negative and also significant for US, but less significant and uh, and in the magnitude of the ecosystem problem. Our and our so another way is that but maybe positive variation and well said negative variation have a different impact on GDP. So we also tested the beta hypothesis by including in the uh, easy regression in the fitted using the fitted uh, variable for web shares of the top 10 percent or the middle 40 percent population is positive partial positive sum and then partial negative what we found is that that the partial positive sum has a negative effect on this growth and the partial negative sum which are negative in the underlying model so this this uh, this coefficient could be read must be read as a positive effect. Um, I'm more or less the same here. I, I'm sorry because here it's not possible to to see that, but <laughs> believe me, the confidence interval of this coefficient and this coefficient overlap, and this means that these two coefficients cannot be treated because they are based. So, uh, here I gathered data for Mexico too, uh, but uh, the, the original paper we considered only France and US because France is and so we have enough evidence to leave our results. But in any case, so in Mexico, as you will see, what we want to do is very, very important because the top 10%, the richer 10% population, all about 70 80% of total population. The middle 40 is said is still about uh, around the 25 20%, and the poor order not working, and they got the, the situation after the thousand and after the thousand, they also want to We try to replicate uh, our analysis for Mexico before in the model for US because we we thought that US is a more similar country to Mexico. But I mean, I think that rich and poor are equally segregated in Mexico. And also because <laughs> in this case the government is terrible to generate um, an unstable trust. So uh, we computed the optimal lag for Mexico and this was two, and we find this result. Uh, even in this case, an increase in one percentage point uh, of web share or by enriching. Generate a drop in GDP, which is significant. So, I mean, I don't have data for luxury consumption factor, but I think if you want a statistical interest in argument, you can see the, the investigation and uh, try to, to find a reason for it. Because I think. It could be useful maybe for a statistical price, and I see that there are several students who have been there interested in writing a thesis. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a good point to start. So, basically, what what uh, we can conclude from, from this analysis? So, increasing wealth inequality in France definitely decreased growth, uh, but for the US, the the data are less strong. The, the, the results are less strong. So, so this aspect is visible when
when we reach so an increasing preference for luxury consumption rather than wealth. Uh, however, when the poor show a high preference for luxury consumption, the negative effect of increasing wealth inequality on growth is damaged. And this may be due to fear effects caused by less segregation for poor than in wealth. I believe that this could be also due to uh, less incentive consumption. Different uh, reasons, better distribution, um, um, okay. they, uh, they look after your uh, institutions, look after uh, your activities of the test. As it goes well, uh, why are not the case in our country or in France? Well, uh, I mean, there is a lot to do to help uh, the people to do the analysis. Uh, I think a very good point, starting point, like all of this. Also, let's keep it very good. To uh, perform a sensitivity analysis, uh, how we have to do more changes of the employee percent of population selected for this model? It is a uh, increase of population. Uh -huh. Well, uh, if I talk probably on a data plan. Moreover, I, I see this data used for data models, I think it's not very relevant because we are ready to see the data models. Is the new change a uh, small value of the top 10%? Several 
personas, yo soy la coordinadora de la maestría en ciencia de datos de documentación. Les damos la bienvenida a este, con este primer seminario, el único seminario de arranque. Pues la intención de este seminario es que nos integremos un poco, que, que tanto profesores, la planta docente y la planta administrativa que conozcan quién está detrás de este instituto de WhatsApp y para llevar que que se que sepan que por ahí también les envían mensajes o, o por ejemplo este con quién se pueden dirigir entonces de repente por ahí este las personas que se puedan referir por estarlo entonces, bueno, vamos a empezar este, con la dinámica. La dinámica, bueno, consiste en presentarnos todos este, brevemente de, de qué carrera venimos, si somos de nuevo ingreso, los que son de reingreso, ya podría, por ejemplo, decir con qué doctor están trabajando su, su tema de tesis. Este, y bueno, si consideran este, algún mensaje de bienvenida para los de nuevo ingreso, también juntas de ingreso. Y de, de igual manera, nos vamos a presentar de este lado, tanto los maestros como el personal de la misma Pero, ¿cómo vamos a empezar? Por aquel lado. Nos pues vamos a empezar por aquel lado. Les comento que en esta ocasión, para esta generación, en esta primera generación de la maestría, eh, tuvimos, eh, aceptamos a ocho personas. Este, finalmente, eh, una persona ya no pudo ingresar, por lo cual solo se incorporan siete nuevos estudiantes. Tenemos por ahí siete personas que se integran. Y comentarles también que este, se reintegra una persona que tenía baja temporal de la primera generación, que se va a incorporar de lleno con la segunda generación, que va al demás. No sé si anda por aquí. Bueno, si no ha llegado, ya lo conocerá. Posteriormente en las clases van a venir a conocerlos. Y la otra persona que se integra con los de esta generación 3 de centro de CAR es un profesor del ciclo político de presentar que también fue admitido el, el año pasado, pero este, que ahorita se reincorpora con nosotros y va a ingresar junto con esta generación. Entonces, finalmente en esta nueva generación sí va a haber ocho estudiantes. Entonces, bueno, pues vamos a ver cómo estamos por aquí. En los demás, pues ya nos iremos conociendo en el resto de los seminarios, en las actividades que se realizan en encima. Este, bueno, vamos a darles la palabra. Me voy a ir así como en orden. Este, van a ir, yo me imagino que salteados, son los que están por ahí que están este, 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 Eh, yo soy Natalia Galoa, estoy en el semestre eh, de formación de ingeniería física. Ahí estoy trabajando en Mijenis con el doctor Félix eh, en simular eh, fenómenos físicos con redes neuronales. Yo me llamo Juan Diego, eh, soy de nuevo ingreso y soy ingeniero yo me llamo Juan Angelina, soy el segundo semestre, este es una materia sobre la doctora Irma, el tema va a ser sobre el tema de tres tiempos y un poquito de predicción importante. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Iván Cuevas, de eh, la empresa también, y soy un señor. Soy Jorge, soy para mi grupo de compañeros de matemáticas, que eh, incorpora la maestría a mi cuerpo de Pero no ingresa a la maestría, y pues nada, es el perfecto, no cae en todos los años. Thank you.
Eh, bueno, buenas tardes. Yo soy Diego de León. Eh, yo soy ingeniero químico por la Facultad de Ciencias Químicas de la UAR. Yo trabajo con el doctor Oliver en mi tesis. Bueno, yo soy el tercer presente. Y eh, el tema es sobre el sistema eléctrico de México. También estoy en tercer semestre y me encuentro trabajando con el doctor Espera, que es totalmente enfocado más que nada a la salud, principalmente en el tema de la salud. Yo soy Martín Chiarri Barra, soy licenciado en la especialidad de psicología. Estoy de matemática también. Ah, bueno, y doctor especialista de la no, no, no. Ah, este, estoy trabajando con el tema de cadena de suministro de la industria. Bueno, yo soy José Eduardo Millano, yo también soy licenciado en matemáticas, y actualmente estoy trabajando con la doctora Irma en programas de investigación. Pues en este ramo todos somos estudiantes. Si te faltan por ahí un par de minutos, eso es porque está en él. Falta 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 visto países que no tienen visitas. Falta con su vida en la universidad de Guadalajara. Nadie está contando con su vida. Él está contando con su vida. Nada, pero cuánto son los Buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos. Yo soy Félix Saucedo. Eh, yo soy físico de carrera. Tengo maestría en ciencias de los materiales y posteriormente hice doctorado en física. Mi línea de investigación, pues, abarca, voy a decirlo así, dos ramas. Una rama que es la instalación de objetos médicos para resolver ecuaciones espaciales. Y la otra que estoy mencionando, que es el segundo grado, pues, es el grado de
tal? Bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Alejandro Navarro. Soy ingeniero de electrónica. Para ver si me lo bien. Mi línea de investigación en la ciencia de datos, particularmente en aplicaciones de datos de machine learning. Yo soy Alejandro Navarro. Yo soy Alejandro Navarro. Bienvenidos a todos. Yo soy Marisa Álvarez. Eh, de formación soy licenciada en matemáticas aplicadas. Estoy en la y de maestría de doctorado con eh, la especialidad en ingeniería de sistemas, básicamente por su eh, investigación en eh, He trabajado en cosas de investigación en redes, pero desde que, bueno, yo me llevo más tiempo aquí en la universidad y en estado trabajando principalmente con la doctora y Apaya, con la doctora Isma en temas así de problemas de empleo, y actualmente también he estado trabajando en proyectos con algunos proyectos que involucran más cosas de estadística, de datos, intento adaptarme a proyectos con la doctora y con la Ya revisión del profesor que le va a dar este acompañamiento. 
Este acompañamiento es meramente, digamos, como un ir de la mano este, en el transcurso de la maestría. Ahorita, por ejemplo, en este primer semestre, es que me va a apoyar a ver este, dependencia de su situación, este, el tiempo laboral, pues van a ser vitales o cosas por el estilo, la carga académica, por ejemplo, a llevar este semestre. Entonces, yo les pasé ahí con la relación de Ney, con quien quedó, Héctor, pues lo mejor con Clara, aunque está con Félix, porque él me hace este, el año pasado, Heriberto, con quien está, Iván, Diego. Entonces, eh, para que se dirijan este, con, su, con sus tutores para la firma de la carga académica. Eh, yo aquí traigo un precio de las cargas académicas que se ve por ahí en el WhatsApp. Ahorita, cuando terminemos, se las hago llegar, porque todos los que estamos ahorita y a lo mejor pueden aprovechar para, para que puedan investir en la carga académica o bien para que se pongan de acuerdo de cuándo se pondrían en, en estos días y ya se lo bueno, puedan hacer bien. ¿sale? Entonces, bueno, por ahí tienen la relación. Si tienen alguna duda, es que por ahí el archivito, por ahí vienen por la relación, si las preguntas que acaban de, de mandar. Este, para recordárselo, pero bueno, para no detenerme en eso, este, ahorita vamos a esta parte de los casos. Bueno, y más que eso es la palabra. Gracias. Bueno, buenas tardes a todos, bienvenidos. Se reingreso a este nuevo semestre, ya llevo un año. Y bienvenidos a los chicos de nuevo ingreso. ¿no? Muchas gracias por la confianza, por su trabajo y a la maestría. Yo estoy ahorita al frente de la actual. Soy Marela García Carrillo. Yo soy de formación con el equipo de la práctica. Y mi área de interés es la de la comunicación, matemáticas aplicadas y por todo el mundo. de varios tipos 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 de de trabajo académico. Podemos algunos ya tenemos varios años, los reyes de la Algunos cuantos. Pero bueno, eh, todos tienen la mejor disposición. Me hablo con mis compañeros profesores porque los conozco. Eh, acá todos ustedes. Todos tienen la mayor disposición y con compromiso con el equipo para que ustedes tengan la forma. Entonces, cualquier cosa que ustedes requieran, se pueden asistir con su tutor, se pueden asistir con la doctora Yancaya, que es la coordinadora del programa, que trabajo en el pasado, apoyado también con la doctora Aneja, se pueden asistir conmigo, ya que tienen cualquier inquietud, cualquier duda, cualquier cosa, y vemos la mejor forma de que se resuelva el poder de mi Entonces, cualquier situación que ustedes consideren, por favor, no duden en hacer. No se puede resolver de una de otra forma. ¿Okay? Y bueno, eh, pues, la planta académica requiere un apoyo administrativo y un apoyo universitario eh, y un apoyo en el centro de cómputo, que la verdad es que las personas de apoyo pues, sería muy difícil poder desarrollar una parte de eso. Entonces, eh, la licenciada de la mensaje, ella es la secretaria administrativa. Con ella se, eh, se tiene que elegir para todo el rollo de los pagos. La cuestión de los pagos sí es para beneficio su propio la maestría. Nosotros no, no tenemos que para el final, ni se queda aquí para, para beneficio propio de los pagos. ¿Sí? Entonces, aquí el licuario de la administrativa, que hace un excelente trabajo con toda la gestión de las cuentas y todo, la verdad es que es Entonces, con ella, creo que ya se han estado diciendo, porque van a decir para hacer. El, lo del rollo de los pagos, lo que les dé la pizza, no sé qué, cualquier cosa. No, 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 no. También está la licencia de Jenny. Ay, perdón, 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 perdón,
Y el mes encargado de toda la parte de control escolar de la maestría. También les ha estado mandando mensajes para los que tienen la oportunidad de los de de las matrículas, todo el mundo, ¿no? Entonces, para que nos conozcan, y el mes también con sus poderes para poder. La licenciada Lidia Liliana Lozano, ella es la carrera de la biblioteca, que ahorita vamos a pasar a las instalaciones para que vean, tenemos un montón de libros más de donde están todos del área de matemáticas, si ustedes pueden sacar los libros de préstamo, y ella es la encargada de todas las partes que ella ha estado en el Porque puedo conseguirte en el También ella nos está apoyando con la parte de los encargos. Sí, nada más la firma de la sala, le pasamos con la de los precios y nos vamos ahorita todos si gustan para que conozcan dónde se van a impartir las materias. Algo importante, las clases ya van a ser presenciales. Hay que seguirnos cuidando los cubrebocas, pero ya se va a hacer la clase presencial. Sí, 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 sí. Thank you. 